What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. Unbelievably, they decided to also have some behavioral um, guidance that says you cannot cuss. You, you have to wear appropriate attire. And everybody knows when you say appropriate attire, you're talking about telling women what to wear. You're not talking about, you know, like, so what, you can't go in there with shorts or a V-neck? Is a V-neck too risque to deal with bones? The bones are going to be very, very offended, you know? Yeah. And then top it off that um, they had a protocol that said um, menstruating personnel, they didn't even use the word woman, um, are not allowed in the curation facility or to handle bones. Oh, my God. And so when all this was happening, I had, um, I basically had contacted uh, Pacific Legal Foundation to get some legal help. And they basically helped me sue my university. There were other aspects, such as in the summer, um, before we, re I think it was before we returned, but I Sometimes timing is difficult when there's so much. Right. Um, um, my chair, hosted by my dean, had uh, held a talk, a webinar talk, on what to do when your tenured colleague has been branded a racist. <laughs> and they then changed the name. They, my chair then went ahead and told, you know, the whole story from his perspective. And um, but changed my name so that people wouldn't be able to figure out. I'm the only person studying skeletal remains at San Jose State. So and it's a small department. So anybody could have figured it out like w within five seconds of a Google search. But and they're only calling you a racist. And just to make sure I'm following here, they're, they're only calling you that because you didn't want to repatriate. Well, I think that that's where it started. Yeah. Um, the. Then they say I'm racist because I didn't like the citational justice part, right? So that's the other aspect, you know. So there's there's um, the oh, site right. black yeah, out, there's, yes. and then the Native American Studies Center. Oh my god! Um, but um, they changed when my my chair talked about it. He changed my name to professor from Professor Weiss to Professor Jones, so to try to hide my identity. Nice with, yeah. Um, so after, and, and basically what he said during that talk was that the way, what to do if you're, if you have this, um, you know, uh, this evil in your department, <laughs> um, is to keep, basically keep resources away from them and try to take them out of their class and, or out of their classes and, you know, just kind of things like, he, at first he was like, no, you know, she, I, I'm not worried about the classroom because, Professor Jones doesn't teach her perspective in the classroom, doesn't use her materials in the classroom. And I do, of course. I teach both perspectives. That's how what a good professor does. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an excellent professor, but I, do, I did try to keep things balanced. Um, and, um, but basically, um, when, it, when he was challenged, they said, well, what about if Professor Jones decided to, teach, to assign her book? And he said, well, yeah, then I might, I might consider taking her out of a class. So when he said all this, I, that was basically the jumping off, the big joint jumping off point for the, this lawsuit. So that kind of triggered the biggest step in there. So um, along with all the stuff happening at my university, I had, um, I was to give a talk at the Society for American Archaeology, which was online because of COVID. And this is the largest academic um, archaeology or, uh, association or organization in the U.S. And so I had submitted an uh, abstract and basically um, got accepted. And the abstract challenged it. It challenged the use of creation myths to make determinations on whether bones should go back. So most people. Would it, most anthropologists would agree that you shouldn't use like the biblical creation myths to try to reconstruct what happened in the past. Mm. <laughs> but they have no problem accepting creation myths from Native Americans. And so my perspective mm. is that they're both creation myths 
and neither should be used to determine what we can and cannot study. So um, af after that talk ran, they did take it off the platform and issue an apology and basically said, uh, we'll make sure that this does this kind of thing doesn't happen again. So, <laughs> yeah. So that was another aspect of it. So all of these things are happening um, and within a fairly short period of time. In the meantime, I was desperate to uh, get back into studying skeletal remains, and I there was one collection. Uh, there was actually three things that I was trying to gain access to, to in order to rebuild my uh, my scholarly or my research career. Um, one of the things is animal bones, non-human animal bones that are clearly not grave goods. So, you know, like if you have a, uh, a bird bone whistle that's buried with the individual, I would say that's a grave good. I'm not interested in that because that falls under NAGPRA. But the other animal bones, basically like the refuse, mm -hmm. you know, like the deer that they butchered to eat. And part of the reason why I was interested in gaining access to animal bones is that a lot of my research is actually about bone biology and not just specific to reconstructing the past. And so I figured I had a few ideas that I could use animal bones for. Um, as a substitute for human bones. Uh, upon requesting those animal bones, which are not under NAGPRA or CalNAGPRA, which only deals with human remains and sacred artifacts, I was told that the tribe had decided that the animal bones, all animal bones, um, were sacred and I would not be getting access to them. So basically, they decided that, that was, those were sacred. And unfortunately, when I was in the suing my university for access, the judge, I would say, misunderstood the law. And she, her understanding of deference to the tribe was that deference was to mean that everything they say goes. <laughs> Whereas, um, basically, um, deference in even in Kalnakpra, which I'm completely opposed to, but I can, I can understand the, the nuance sure. from it, um, is that basically def in relation to human remains and sacred artifacts, that doesn't mean that they can say everything is sacred. And the definition of sacred is something that you need, the definition in the law, I should say, is that it's something that needs um, would be needed for a religious ritual. Did they say this? I just want to make sure I follow this part. Did they say, make this sacred remains claim about the animals as a result of you looking into it specifically? Or had they already said it before and now we're just like reinforcing their little bullshit law? Um, they had never claimed that they were sacred before. It just came there right after I asked for it. There you go. And then the other aspect was, so that was, you know, strike one, <laughs> sense, right? I think we're on like strike eight now, <laughs> according to these people. The, the other aspect was I asked for x-rays. Now, x -ray, I've done x-ray and CT scan studies since, two, since 1997. So this is one area of my research is looking at bones with x-rays and CT scans. And so... A large amount of x-rays had been taken from these skeletal remains, and um, they're housed in the curation facility. They're housed in that room. And so I asked for, for access to the x-rays, and um, lo and behold, the x-rays are now sacred. Um, now, x-rays cannot be sacred because they didn't have x-rays in the Around past. How many years? And so, they, <laughs> and so they could not have been used in their traditional ancient rituals. <sighs> but, uh, and Nick has, a, you know, his line is that if I had asked for a pencil, it would have turned sacred. <laughs> you know, that it didn't matter what I asked for. The third thing that I asked for was a collection uh, from Carthage, Tunisia. 
And um, they actually did ask the tribe whether this collection was related to them, and the tribe said no. I think now, ha if they would ask them again, I have the feeling they probably would, realizing that they could get away with it, they probably would say yes, <laughs> you know? Um, Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.